Hello and welcome to Six Figure Authors, the show that helps you take your writing career to the next level. We've been publishing since the beginning of the e-reader revolution and we share our own insights on the show, but we also interview inter industry experts and other successful authors and we record our own intro. Uh, our goal is to provide as much advanced writing, publishing and marketing material as we can and to help you figure out what's working right now. I'm Lindsay Baroker and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Joe Lalo. And I'm Andrea Pearson. All right, and today's subject is going to be how you can use box sets slash bundles, whatever you like to call them, to increase your income and your reach with readers. Uh, before we jump into that, uh, since this is kind of our first show after interviewing each other and <laughs> doing a, that stuff, do you guys want to chime in a little bit and talk about what you're working on in the author world this week? Sure. Um, so I, I, I announced on a, in a newsletter recently, uh, that uh, next year's probably going to be the year of six is what I call it. I've got three main series that each have five books in their main thread, like, like numbered sequels is, is up to five in all three of the main series. So I'm starting to outline the sixth book of each of those series, which I hope to put out next year. So that started earlier today. Uh, and also the third book of my urban fantasy series, which is my first attempt into KU. It released uh, a little more than a week ago, which meant they just sent the follow-up. So that was the newsletter, it was a follow-up on that. And now that three of them are out, I'm starting to look at how I'm gonna do a price promo and a push to funnel people back to book one. I'm probably going to do, do uh, some of the KU free days and I'm trying to stack two or three uh, promo sites to, to capitalize on that. And then I might, when it goes back from free, re lower the price of book one to 99 cents. I'm not sure yet but that's what I'm working on. Can I ask you, because I know you kind of did a sort of rapid release and this always bothers me as, as a thing I consider. Uh, do you feel that it'll be a bad thing to lower the price uh, so soon on a book one that you just released, I don't know, a couple months ago? Because I actually have the same thing <laughs> yeah. potentially going on for a box set coming up. That's why I say I'm not sure if I'm going to do the 99 cent thing. It's tricky because like, I did a couple of different things. I, I did a couple of things different with this uh, with this re uh, this release. I work with Story Bundle a lot, so the first book of this was in a Story Bundle. So technically, the first 500 or so copies that were sold were sold at effectively 99 cents because that's what it worked out to if you purchased the bundle. Uh, so technically, early adopters already got their 99 cent copies. Um, then again, I, uh, if I had not done that, I probably would have launched at 99 cents. And so I'm not 100% sure. Chances are I'm still going to do it. Um, I don't feel as though I've left too many people high and dry on this one. They had plenty of opportunity. But in the future, I probably won't do like the story bundle launch. And then I will launch at 99, cent, 99 cents and not worry about the price change. Cool. <laughs> OK, well. Um... Yeah. Okay. So updates from me. Um, I'm still working on the launch of my book, Shadow Prophet. That's coming out October 15th. And um, <laughs> some of our listeners have probably heard from me if they write fantasy. I'm assuming Joe did not hear from me. <laughs> not, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I've got a bunch of promotions lined up for that first day that it launches about 3 million or 2 million eyes worth will be seeing that book the first day, which kind of bites because I usually like to do a soft launch on Tuesday and then a big launch on Wednesday by the time my, you know, my readers have been able to post reviews and all that. But it was like the only day most of these play piece places were available. So that like new in books, Lindsay, you'd mentioned that a while ago and I was like, Oh, I'm going to go look this out. And then I kind of liked the way they looked and I signed up for that. Um, anyway, so yeah, so I've got a bunch of that that sort of thing set up. I'm going to be, I've got 40 authors out of the 100, the goal for 100 so far set up for featuring it that week. And um, like I said, I think when we did my interview several months ago, all of this is like experimental. I just want to see what would happen if I, if I did a swap with 100 authors. And I've had about a quarter of them uh, take one of my courses instead of wanting me to feature them to their readers or to my readers. Um, let's see. So yesterday I sat down and I figured out exactly how much time I need to write, revise and, and publish a book given interruptions to the schedule and kids and flu and things like that. And it's about nine weeks 
And so I'm going to be setting up all the rest of the series as pre-orders. And that's like giving myself a lot of cushion room even. So 10 days for dictating and then 20 days for revisions. And then, you know, waiting for my editor and doing other things in the middle. And I only work um, five and six days a week. Um, so I'm going to set those up for, as pre-orders and then see how that goes for this series. These are, it's going to be a rapid wide release and I'm still testing the waters there. My last series didn't do super well, but I was, my problem with that is I actually launched it to Kindle Unlimited first. And then I decided to do a rapid wide release after that with each book coming out a little at a time, but because I wasn't focusing on Amazon and the other retailers at the same time, it didn't go super well. So this time I'm doing wide rapid release, which is nine weeks. I guess that's, I don't know if I consider that a rapid release, but um, anyway, so we'll just, I just want to see if I can get that good momentum by that last book, see what happens with that. Weren't you kind of having a child in the middle of your last <laughs> launch? I was looking at the dates and I'm like, I think that was when Andrea was like, in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know I had a baby in March and that was, yep, halfway through my series. <laughs> that does tend to like, upset the schedule a little bit. <laughs> All right. And for myself, I'm kind of, let's see, I just published book five in my sci-fi series and I just finished the rough draft of book six, which ended up at 140, it's at 144,000 words right now. It's got seven POV characters and I might have to add a couple scenes when I'm editing. So add a this, couple other characters too. <laughs> make it well, that's awesome. what happens when you get to book six in the series, right? Um, so this is not how to maximize revenue by writing exactly what, you know, 75,000, 80,000 words or whatever for five bucks. But, you know, it's, it's what happens if you have a lot of characters and are doing kind of a... It, I mean, it's space opera, but I would call it kind of epic space opera and that there will be some government upheavals and all that before this is all over. So it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all right. I, I have a, my fantasy box set and we're actually going to talk about box sets that's kind of been doing well this, uh, this summer. So that makes me worry less about, you know, this is taking a little longer to finish these books than uh, normally would. Uh, so that is what I've been working on, and I'm kind of kicking around the idea of writing a quick something easy before I go to book seven, because as you can imagine, these are pretty involved and just occupies a lot of headspace trying to get all the different storylines chronologically matching up. So and I'm that's another reason why jumping from series to series is harder, right? I mean, because you've got so many um, characters to keep track of. It's why I try to write and finish one before I move to another, but I am thinking of doing just a quick side project to give myself my brain a little like something easy. I haven't decided yet, but we'll see. cleanser. <laughs> just a little bit of something to have a release, you know, for this fall without, uh, you know, I, it just, I don't want to rush things. If it's going to be 140,000 words, it's what it's going to be, you know, but so that is uh, my world right now. And shall we hop on in and talk about bundles today? Because as I said, I've had one that's kind of been outselling or right up there with my new releases for the last few months. Um, I guess I'll just kind of define some different kinds of bundles slash box sets that uh, you can do as a, most of these are going to be for self-publishing independent authors who have all their rights for everything. And it's, it's easy to do this. But um, so I, here's what I wrote down. And <laughs> you guys, if you think of anything else, let me know. Uh, individual author series bundles, like uh, just your own stuff, all your own stuff, like books one through three in a set or going on, maybe you do, we'll talk about this too, books four through six and whatever. Um, and then individual author series starters. I, I've done this once a couple years ago and I'll probably do it like unpublish that one and make a new one but this was four of my book ones for four different series they were all fantasy and I also added a novella exclusive to that series so that there was a reason for everybody to pick up that box set even my readers who've uh, read everything okay. uh, and then go Are ahead we, uh, did you want to discuss these right now or just have I was just going to define these and then and then I'll ask you a question okay <laughs> um, next on my list is an individual author complete series bundle which could be like six books uh, you know and, and this you'll see this a lot in KU right now 
And next would be like a multi-author box set, usually single novels. These are often people's books ones where you might have book, books one, <laughs> where you might have 10 different authors or even more. I've seen like 20, 21, you know, authors in a bundle, uh, all with their book ones in there. And then, of course, kind of a traditional multi-author anthologies of, of short stories and novellas. Uh, Andrea, did you want to comment? Yeah, I was actually wondering, I mean, is, does that include like story bundle and rabbit bundle? I mean, these, the types of bundles? A story bundle would essentially be kind of like, well, that's something that you can't just do, though. You have to be invited yeah. to join or you have to know uh, Jason Chan over there, like Joe is buddies with. To or do one. Kevin J. Anderson. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> these are kind of them. things that you can put together completely on your own, you acting as the publisher. Okay, good point. All right, uh, well, now that we've kind of introduced some different kinds of bundles, let's talk about tactics, like how would you want to use these? Um, and I think I usually go into these up until recently, I think, with the idea that I just want to increase my audience uh, and get to more people, because a lot of the times you'll be doing these 20 author box sets with uh, and putting it out at 99 cents, hence the, uh, the appeal. <laughs> and I, you know, I've done some of those, um, but, I, I am actually more a fan of things you can completely control. So I like to do these with a, like a series starter. Because uh, often by the time the series has been out for a year or two, you'll have like, a, you've already run your book, you've tried to get the book bub ad on book one, and maybe you got lucky and got it, and you've run all these promos and sales on book one, and you feel like all the sites have seen it already. So that what you can do is do like books one through three or books one through four, depending on your length and how big your series series is. And then put that together as sort of like, I'll, I'll do a different blurb, you know, from the book one, I'll try to try it from a different angle. And then maybe you do a different cover that might appeal to a different audience. Some people uh, just mash together the covers, which is an option. I, I've done both. Um, but it, and you might even be able to put it in different categories if you were kind of maxed out on your categories before, but you thought, oh, well, maybe this could also be under YA or, you know, new adult in college or, or something like that. So it's, it's like another book one into your series is how I like to use those. Have you guys done all the, done those? Uh, I have got one through, th I've got, well, you know, the way I've done it is again, three main series. Uh, all three of my three main series have got a book one through three uh, anthology. And for two of them, uh, the sci-fi uh, series, Big Sigma, and the fantasy series, uh, The Book of Deacon, uh, I also included any of the short side stuff or long side stuff. In the case of Book of Deacon, I think there's five full novels in there, uh, even though only three of them are, are main series numbered editions. Uh, so there's always something in there that isn't available separately. And I, in, 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 Talking to fans about it, lots of them wish that I would also release the exclusive separately just so that if they already bought the books individually, they don't have to buy an entire bundle in order to get the, the exclusives. Uh, so Isn't that the whole point, though? Is to uh, well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, a, that's the balance between making lots of money uh, or at least making more money versus uh, uh, trying to avoid taking advantage of your audience, which for me is a huge tug of war. For others, uh, they don't worry so much about that. Um, but yeah, so the, so I've done the series starters like that. Uh, um, yeah, so that, that's where I stand on there. And let's see, for me, I do, I've do. i done a whole bunch of different types of box sets, um, the individual author series stars. I haven't actually done that. And I was wondering, Lindsay, I mean, how well did that go for you? I mean, it's hard to measure how well those kinds of things do. I actually find it, super successful for a couple of reasons. One is I'm a lot, it's a lot easier to get a book bub, at least for me. I, I don't think it's, it's been a long time since I was able to get one on a single author, a single book. But when you have a series, uh, like a three book box set, that's say you've got an eight ninety nine or nine ninety nine, and then you're willing to drop it to either 99 cents or free, I'll usually, the first time I have a sale, I'll make it 99 cents, maybe. And then three years later, you know, if I'm able to get a book bub again, I'll do it for free, especially if there's like eight books total in the series. So I found it useful for that, for running promos. It seems like a better deal. And so I've you're, saying, you're saying like, like um, books one and books one of multiple series, and then you submit that to BookBub? No, I don't think they would take that. 
Oh, okay. I mean, That's like what I was asking about. Oh, like, okay. I did that just on my own. I published it the four book one, four book ones. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, that's what I was wondering about. Cause I was like, I haven't done that yet. Okay. So yeah, I actually, that was pretty successful considering I kind of half, uh, half effort. Like I didn't get any promos or anything. I just, <laughs> I, I mailed my list to like, Hey, this has a new novella in it. And I made it 99 cents. Cause I think two of the four books were perma free anyway, you know, so I wasn't going to charge a lot. And it, you know, this, I think it's been about three years now since I did it. So the sales ranking now is drop to 50,000 or something but for a long time it actually sold i don't know 1 to 2,000 copies a month at 99 cents and considering those were all you know four four different series that people could go on and buy i i do think it, it helped quite a bit and that's why i'm thinking oh i should do it again and i have like another book one i think i could put in the mix now and change it up a little bit new cover new blurb and just try again but yeah, um, I don't think you can get a book bub on that. I don't think I ever got anybody to promo it. But because it was four and a half books, <laughs> four novels and a novella for 99 cents, it, it worked pretty well. Actually, I should make that free. I haven't done that yet. All right. <laughs> put that on my list, guys. Yeah, no, I've done, I've done, yeah, box sets and things like that. That's like you, Lindsay. I have, it's been a while since I've been accepted by book bub for a single book. Um, it's probably been uh, two years now. Uh, they generally accept the box sets, but um, I've got uh, box sets. I used to do like complete series box sets. Now I do that for very exclusive, I mean not exclusive, very brief promo periods. Like I'll submit it to BookBub and then that box set for that series will only be available for maybe a week or maybe two weeks because I found it cannibalizes the downloads of my individual books too much. And so instead I do books one through three for $9.99 and books three, three, three through six for four through six for uh, $9.99, et cetera. And then, yeah, BookBub accepts those at free quite regularly, which, you know, makes me quite a bit more money than I honestly make more money on my free box sets than I do on the 99 cent box set promos. But um, probably because the 99 cent box promos, they're like, it's like 350 bucks for a free on fantasy. And for a 99 cent on fantasy, it's like 750 bucks. <laughs> so as of two weeks ago, when I last checked I was like, holy cow, I make a lot more money on those free ones. Um, but yeah, no, I love box sets. And I found that a lot of my readers will only read box sets. Uh, they they don't ever buy the individual books. They prefer having the next book available because they say they don't actually go and buy the next book if it's not readily available. Yes, they say they're lazy. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. But um, no, yeah, so I I love box sets. They're great. I should add too that um, I've mentioned this before that my Dragon Blood series was not intended to be a series. So book one just kind of wraps up the story. And, you know, of course I add that there's another book with new characters, but since it's new characters, I think that people would go, hmm, kind of think about it before going on. But by putting all the first three books into a box set, they have them. So they just, they keep reading. And I think that somebody is even more likely to be hooked and into the story by the end of the third book then, um, you know, hopefully I, people will buy it after, get hooked after one book, but you know, sometimes it takes you a little while to hit your stride. And I feel like they're a little more committed after they finish and the read through rate tends to be pretty high on, uh, when those, when I get those box sets into people's hands. Now I've got a couple of questions on this one. Uh, series starters. Now, some of us don't have, in my case, each of my series is a different, um, genre. And uh, uh, it's, would that complicate matters? Like if I was to do, and also by the way, they're all perma-free. So if I was to do a, a series starter bundle and make it perma-free, uh, uh, would you say that like having three different genres or three, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, and steampunk are the three, you think that's gonna complicate matters and maybe just n not make it worthwhile? Or is there still value in making a, 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 a free series starter bundle? I probably wouldn't do it for different genres. Cause I think then too, you risk getting reviews that are like, well, book one was okay, but book two sucked cause it was sci-fi and who likes sci-fi, you know? That's pretty much why I haven't done it. Yeah, I kind of waited until I had four loosely epic fantasy series that I could put together. Um, what do you guys do for pricing when it comes to, I know Andrea mentioned 9.99 for um, like if you're doing books one through three in a bundle. Do you, I know, I think Joe, you've got yours more expensive too. Yeah, and it depends on if that first book is perma free. Nine ninety nine for three books when the first book's perma free is kind of, you know, more expensive. So, 
yeah, I base it off of what the individual books are priced. And then I usually go about $2 cheaper, sometimes $3 cheaper. Yeah. I also uh, typically just add together the, the prices of the individual books and then knock off a dollar or two. Although my, I end up, doing like very long-term price promos on some of my some of my box sets so that like it might be only at five dollars for like nine months or so partially because oh it's been doing pretty well i'll leave it at this price until it stops doing pretty well and partially because i will forget that i have made that price promo and just leave it like that for a long time but also most of these have something in there that is you know some non-trivial amount of additional words that i can usually justify you know not reducing the price quite so much because you're getting technically, you know, another dollar's worth of writing in there. But yeah, in general, total price minus a dollar or two. That's usually how I start them, especially if it hasn't been that long since I published the individual titles, if it was like that same year. Uh, and then, I, like I said, if you get a book bub, it looks good if you're going from like 9.99 to 99 cents. Uh, I'm the same way, like if I do the perma-free thing for the box set, or not perma-free, but free for a promo, I'll just tend to let it run in part because it's hard to get Amazon to price match it back. You have to make sure it's the prices are up on all the other sites and then email them usually or wait forever for them to figure out that it's no longer free elsewhere. Um, but leaving the price that way for a while, BookBub will leave it on their website until, you know, for a long time. And so you get this very, very, very long tell and... Every single time I've changed the price, my, you know, my downloads drop significantly. I'm like, oh, I should have kept it free for a little longer. That's exactly what I was going to say. And then we got that from a guest. It might have even, I don't remember, it might have been you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I now start, if I'm going to make it free, I start telling BookBub that oh, the deal is going to be free for like four months or something, that I won't change it back. And yes, they do leave it on there. And yes, I get hits from the BookBub website from people surfing days later or even months later. And, and picking it up. Um, I do have kind of a conundrum coming up with a, that's why I was asking Joe about dropping the price. Because <laughs> I have the first three books in my sci-fi series are going to be coming out in one audiobook omnibus in November that I'm doing through a, a publisher. And the publisher, you know, I said, well, I'll, I'll publish an omnibus too at the same time or a little bit before so they can be linked together. And I know going forward, it's usually the omnibus that I'm just to uh, confuse things. We're now, I'm using the word om omnibus as well as bundle and box set here. <laughs> uh, I know the box sets, like I said, are easier to get book bubs on. So that was part of the reason I wanted the audiobook to be the three book bundle. And also it's more hours, so it's more appealing. Uh, th this one will be exclusive to Audible, uh, Amazon, iTunes, their partners. So anyway, so I was pushing for that, but then the publisher was kind of like, well, you better, you're gonna put the, you know, bundle out soon right so that we can link it up and you're going to have a whole bunch of reviews and it's going to be a bestseller right i was like well probably not if i make it 9.99 so i have to now wrestle with should i just put it out at 99 cents knowing that later i'll do a promo like next year after the series is complete and drop it to 99 cents because um if i put it out at 99 cents when i have books two and three have always been 4.99 that's uh somebody paid a lot of money and, and suddenly five, six months later, it's available for less. So stay tuned. We'll see what I do. <laughs> I hate to disappoint people, but it's like hard either way. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of work. I mean, a lot of expectation on their part too. That's not fair for you, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's just going to have to be, I mean, I can still advertise it at nine ninety nine and probably get you know, an okay ranking because of KU borrows. So we'll see. I'll probably put it out at that price. And then if it's horrific, <laughs> I apologize profusely and go ho hope I can get some ads and run some sales. Uh, see the pressure of working with other with publishers versus just doing yes. everything yourself. <laughs> yeah, but audiobooks, man, that's like I said a little while ago, that's a, a hurdle I need to jump and you know, having a little bit of help on that would be nice. Part of it is that I've seen how well the three book omnibus audiobooks do. And I don't think ACX Audible is really that crazy about them, but they allow no, you to I, do them. I No, good though. That's good. I actually heard that they wouldn't allow you to do them, that they started getting mad. Was, this is like two years ago. I heard some authors were getting theirs pulled down, but that's nice to know that they're not crazy about it, but they still, they let them now. 
they will not let you, ha this is what I've been told, they won't let you do it if you keep books one through three or whatever up in the store individually. So you have to make the choice. I'm either having the omnibus or I'm having the individual titles. Okay, that makes sense. So which, I mean, the omnibus would be worth more than if you have right, more like follow up. They'll sell it for like thirty nine ninety nine, but people can still get it for credit so that it looks like such a better deal. You know, especially if your book one is kind of shorter, maybe it's only like seven or eight hours. It, you know, I know there's a lot of people that go on there, especially in, I think, fantasy probably, and maybe sci-fi too, that are like, I want the 25 hour, you know, epic for my one credit. <laughs> and I had this with my Dragon Blood series. It's a three book omnibus. That's just how it got done because they approached me as the ebook omnibus was selling well. And that's been my best series for audio. It's made the most money. So it works. All right, well, let's move on and talk about why you would want to do multi-author uh, anthologies or bundles. Um, kind of the most obvious thing is that, you know, ideally you're doing these all in your book is like very similar to the other books as far as genre, like maybe they're all fairy tale retellings or they're all epic fantasy or Western romances with cowboys, you know. Um, Part of this is that it can expose you to the audiences of the, the other readers or the other authors who are submitting stuff to the bundles because when these come out, everybody's going to email their list of fans about the new bundle. You're kind of working together to make it hopefully sell thousands of copies. And um, how many of you guys, how many of these have you guys done? I, I used to do a lot. I'm kind of backing out now. I actually just did when it ended up being kind of a lot of work <laughs> as far as expectations were high i think a couple of people wanted to make the usa today list and yeah, I was a like, lot of them that's yeah. what they do that's their goal with a lot of them is list making my desire has always just been well let me get my stuff into more readers hands yeah um because I, I also am not i don't want to poo-poo anybody that made a list and claim that they ha have the letters that way but to me as a reader i i for, it's like for one person, you know, like one author yeah, or yeah. two authors doing collaboration. Yeah. And I feel like, like, yeah, go ahead. Sets, two of the box sets I've been in or three of them have hit USA Today. And I still, I'm like, this is going to rub a lot of authors wrong, but I don't feel like it's that legit because when you have that many authors polling, you know, there's like 19 authors in one box set. Of course, you're going to make USA Today. You know, you've got 19 authors with up to 10, 20,000 readers each, you know, I just feel like it's, and then BookBub did come out and say, they're not going to call you a USA Today bestselling author unless it's on a single author book. And so I'm like, see, BookBub said so. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think it, it's fine to have a goal of selling thousands of copies. And yeah. it can be, especially if you manage to get your way in when you're in a newer author, or if you are the person that starts it, you can approach more popular authors in your genre and you know a lot of times if you offer to do a lot of the work they'll just be like yeah okay and they'll all they have to do is email their list and it's it's an opportunity for them also to uh, be still be exposed to more readers yeah and the list aiming i think it's a very good um goal because it means you're selling thousands of copies and like you were saying you know that means thousands of readers have your book in their hands and it doesn't matter if it's in a multi-author box set or whatever um, you know, because those readers, they're voracious, especially those box set readers, they'll read pretty much everything in the box set. And so when I've been in those box sets, you know, the, the accolades don't really matter as much to me, but the, the readers do. And I've had a lot of read through and a lot of success from those. And so they've been worth it to me, you know, and I would do them again. I'm, they do tend to have a little bit of drama around them, depending on how many people are able to do a lot of the work because they are a lot of work. Um, so you have to be careful who, you know, box sets, which ones you join and things like that. I've had really good experiences, so I'm grateful for that. But um, I've heard horror stories. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've been in quite a few of these. I was only in one that was specifically with an attempt to hit the, the bestseller list and we failed. So I might be the only one on this uh, uh, on this panel that's never been on uh, USA Today. But uh, it doesn't I, matter, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so they still say. Like you. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, you know, they've always gone pretty well for me. Um, I've been involved in like editing them in the past. Lots of them I was in were actually limited time. Uh, so they're not even up anymore, but many of them still are. And, uh, mostly because I do a lot of collaborative stuff, like, you know, curating bundles or, or newsletter swap type stuff. It really, even if it, I mean, I've gotten a lot of readers because of this. And I know that because it, 
for some reason, when people send you an email about a book they read in a box set, they're very, like, they very clearly state, hey, I read your book in a box set and blah, blah, blah. So I, I get often months or years after a box set came out, I'll get an email just out of the blue, like, hey, you were the 17th book in a 30 book box set. And we're like, oh, cool. But uh, even if, this, if even if they didn't go well, just having added that many names to my Rolodex, so to speak, has been uh, is is almost worth it. Uh, as long well, depending on how much work you put in. I've even been in box sets that actually made me money. Like like the person running the box set cut a check. Congratulations, folks! We earned money on this one. <laughs> you that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely been in some that also made money, um, and that's always nice. But as far as just increasing reach and getting people to read your other series, it can be super powerful. Um, and it, of course it should be, goes without saying, make sure you get your, like your bio that says, you know, like here's my newsletter sign up where I have this bonus that's related to the novel you had in there. And uh, here's the link if you want to buy book two. So that never hurts. Um, I, I did want to make a little warning. If you're going to do these multi-author box sets, or even just anthologies of short stories and put it in Kindle Unlimited, exclusive with Amazon. There's a lot of misunderstandings, I think, about what works, but, and I've found this, because this happened to me twice recently <laughs> in bundles. Um, you, if you're the publisher, you need to make sure the authors do not have their books published under their own name on Amazon or anywhere else. You have to have the exclusive right to the, the work that you're gonna put into a box set and publish on Amazon and make exclusive to KU. Uh, and you, they will ask you for contracts that say like, all these authors have given me permission and, and they'll check to make sure the books are not out there. There's a lot of confusion because people think like, well, I, Lindsay, have my book published and it's in KU and it's exclusive with Amazon. So Andrea, who puts together a box set with my book in it, it's okay for us for both copies to be there under different accounts. but. It's not. So just be aware of that right now. And keep in mind also that when you get the rights back to the book after it's been in that exclusive box set that you, you're going to need that contract for when you publish it on Amazon again. Because every single time I've had Amazon say, hey, are you sure you have the rights to this book? Because it was published pre previously under a different rights holder. So make sure you keep contracts on hand. Yeah, this is the, one of the reasons I'm kind of I'm not probably going to do any more of these KU multi-author box sets right now. It's just a little too much hoop jumping, especially if you want to take something that you had already published and you have to pull it down from all the stores. Dang it. So I'm not going to ask you to join the box set I was going to ask you to join. <laughs> I think the easiest way to do it is if everybody writes something original, but that's really hard too, because the author has to want to take the time to A, do that and then give up the money because if it's an established author, they're going to make more uh, by just publishing it on their own. Yeah, and something like that would be good if you like plan it for the future so that authors have time to write something original, you know? So say you're gonna launch it in like a year or something. And I have done it in the past. And obviously that's like the best thing because your readers are all gonna go out and buy it then because they want an original story. Whereas if you're just putting an existing novel into a box set and you email them like, hey, check out this box set and oh, you already bought that book. You know, they, you have to count on them wanting to read the other author's books. Yeah, good point. And did you want to talk about perma-free wide box sets? I know I've been in those two, and, and I think you had mentioned that, Andrea. Yeah, um, I'm more referring to, uh, actually, I mean, both work, both like an anthology with other authors. That works really great because readers are obviously more willing to download a box set that's free than they are an individual book. book. And then I also keep uh, regularly keep up at least one box set that is perma free. And it's usually my Mosaic Chronicle since there's ten novels in that, and so the first you know three novels or three books ish, um, it doesn't hurt me to have that up for free, and it actually encourages download. Like you were saying, once people get through that that finish or that third novel, they're pretty much hooked, and they almost always go on to buy the rest. And so my read through on that is like 95% or something. And so if I can get them reading that box set, then it I get nice downloads later on. And so um, I haven't done that a whole ton with other series. Um, it depends. I mean, I found, like I was saying earlier, people who download box sets tend to be people who read box sets. And so having a perma-free box set of one through three when you only have a six-foot series hasn't been as valuable to me just because if they're not going to be buying that first box set, then I only have one more possible sell in that series for them. And it's sometimes not a big enough ticket 
to make it worth it um, to have that first box set be free. But it does work really, really great, like we were saying with BookBub. And so I will keep that box set up for free for quite some time after a BookBub promotion just to keep encouraging those downloads. Um, and then price pulsing, you you had price pulsing or is that a Joe comment? Joe, I feel like Joe, he's just, he's like just listening to us. Sorry. <laughs> I, hey, like I said, I'm not the USA Today guy at this point, but, uh, but oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't add that. But 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 the uh, but on the subject of price pulsing is basically what I was saying earlier with uh, with long term um, pro price promotions. Uh, I, I have found that I don't know if it's algorithmic or if it's just bloggers driving this sort of thing, but very frequently, even a minor adjustment in a price uh, can cause a little swell in, in downloads. There was a time back when, when, when uh, Permafree was still like a really very effective tool for like, and almost replacing uh, uh, advertising tool for selling books. If your book went off Permafree and then back on, which sometimes happened, like Amazon would like sort of, forget they were price matching for three days and then drop back into price matching. That tiny little price pulse would cause a gigantic new spike as every you know, newly free list would pick it up and do it again. So price pulsing certainly has value, or at least it did. I'm the one who put in the comment, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad we all had something to say on it. Nice. I'm actually in one, a sci-fi, I, I can't remember if it's an anthology or like a box set of novels, but um, uh, with Carolyn Gockel, who uh, we had on the old show a couple times, and she's always managing it, so it's really cool that she's taken that upon herself, but we've got one that's just, we've had together for like two years, and she kind of does that. She'll go for, make it free for a while to get a lot of downloads. I think I might have my Star Nomad book one in my Fallen Empire series in there. I'll, I'll have to check, um, but then she'll raise it to 99 cents, and we'll sell it for a while, and she'll make money so that we can buy ads for, you know, whoever can you know, do it for the next time we're going to go free or the next, you know, and it's just, it's great that she does that. And if you can get somebody running your box set, that's gung ho about keeping things, the downloads moving. It's pretty awesome. Carolyn Gockle. <laughs> <laughs> go look her up. <laughs> Sorry, Carolyn, if you <laughs> suddenly get, get 40 emails or more, I don't know. Well, she's sci-fi. So that, that has to be the, sorry, romance readers. You'll have to find your own Carolyn. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nice. I've also been in perma-free box, multi-author box sets, and, and I know I was in some with Joe uh, a little more earlier when perma-free was more effective on Amazon, but it can still be helpful if you want to, you know, you're trying to figure out how to sell books wide, like maybe you've decided to step away from the exclusivity in KU, but you haven't really made a, had much luck uh, wide. If you can find some other authors that are also wide and have a perma-free book one or one they're willing to have be free for a while in a set, you know, we had some of these that were just with that kind of stock art photos that people, you know, a sword for fantasy and uh, homemade covers. That, so it was like a small investment. But, um, you know, by everybody pushing it, it helped move thousands of copies. Uh, and a lot of them just kind of stuck in there, you know, in the top thousand free. Obviously, the box set's not making any money, but people are checking it out and hopefully continuing on. All right. I already talked about that. <laughs> uh, oh, Andrea, did you, you kind of mentioned the exclusive box sets already. Um, is that something though that you're selling on your website or is that Amazon? Um, so what's there on the list is a reader sign, sign up um, enticement thingy. The later one is one that you sell directly to your readers. Did you want me to talk about both since they're one right after the other? You can certainly do so. <laughs> And then I will make you guys talk. <laughs> um, okay, so exclusive box sets. I think I mentioned this in our interview with me. Uh, doing an exclusive box set to get people to down uh, to join your newsletter list is much more effective for me than doing one book, you know, at a time or a whole bunch of books at once. So that's what I'm talking about. I did talk about that quite a bit in my interview, but here for this purpose, since it is a box set and we are talking about box sets, consider making a box set for readers to download who join your newsletter list just because and yes just because um and then go listen to my interview for additional different information on that did either of you guys have you either of you tried that i think Lindsay, you said you were going to try it when we interviewed when you interviewed me in june have you done it yet <laughs> um actually i don't think i've done anything since june but i the box that i was talking about my four 
series starters of book ones that is free for people who sign up for my fantasy uh, mailing list. And nice. that, yeah, I think it does help because it's like, hey, here's four series you may want to check out all at once. It, they can still buy it for 99 cents. But yeah, it's a free one through book funnel if they want to get it. Right. Nice. I have uh, I have not done full book uh, box sets, but in the past, as as newsletter perks, I have done uh, short story anthology things. Very frequently, one of the things uh, like we talk we're talking about full novel box sets and stuff. There are also short story like multi author short story anthologies, and on more than one occasion, I've I've been asked to write something original for those, and it's a much smaller investment to write an original short story for an anthology than to write an original novel. So I ended up with a big pile of, uh, of short stories and every now and then I'd cluster together a bunch that are in the same genre and make that a newsletter perk. And that's also what ended up driving me to uh, Patreon. And as a result, the output of the Patreon is probably going to produce another short story uh, anthology bundle thing to do this with as well. So, yeah. Now that's cool. Um... Yeah, I haven't done a whole lot of box sets with Patreon or anything like that. Uh, I am currently working on a series for my Patreon supporters that I will eventually turn into a box set, but it'll be a short one because they're a bunch of, it's a novella series. And it's technically a serial because they are cliffhangers. So, you know, I do the thing that lots of people hate, but it works. <laughs> uh, okay, so exclusive box sets that you sell directly to your readers. Uh, this is something that I do. I, I'll put it up on my website and I will tell them why they should download it. And it's generally like what I do, I've done is Andrea Pearson's books, volume one, volume two, and I've done one each year and I'll, so I'll do volume three next year. And they're only available for sale for a week or two. Um, I wasn't planning on having them be available for sale at the same time this year, uh, books or volumes one and two, but my readers asked, asked me to do it. And so I did and ended up doing very well. I made, um, I haven't, I don't remember. I might've made a couple thousand off of them and went off of the first one and it's been up since, I mean, it was available last year. So these are new readers that are downloading it. Uh, but the types of things that I put into it are like, um, I, I write several new stories for it. I give new author notes. So I'll go through and read the book. And then anytime something comes up like, oh yeah, I remember why I picked that location for the scene. So I'll, I'll actually address that in the author note. And then I'll explain where I get names from and inspiration. So my Mosaic Chronicles is the one that I just did this year. I have it. It's based on a lot of stories by Lovecraft and M.R. James. And so, um, and so I was able to, because those stories are in the public domain, I, I was able to offer those as, you know, a free little download for people who bought the exclusive box set. And then I did my own illustrations and then illustrations from my husband. And I've had illustrations from other author um, artists in my box sets. And so I basically... My goal with it, and I, I've told my readers this, like I asked my readers what they wanted, um, what they wanted most, and I, um, I try to, you know, feed on that, feed on that. Um, I try to like give them what they wanted. So the things they requested were like um, coloring pages of the, of the book covers, you know, and then word searches. I talked about this a little bit ago, just those kinds of things. And I do that when I do for download bonuses as well. But so uh, I just ask them what they want. And most of the time, almost without exception, the number one thing they want the most is more writing from me. And so with these box sets, I've been trying to have at least three new um, stories and things like that for them to read. And it depends on the length, like Andrea Pearson's works or books, volume one had a 30,000 word novella in it. And I was like, that's good enough. <laughs> and then this last one, it had two stories in it that were like 10,000 words each. And then, yeah, so that's, worked really well. And it just gives me, it gives them a way to feel like they're more involved in my world. Because like I said, I will, I mean, I tell them things that I don't tell and I don't talk about anywhere else because it's nobody's business. And I would probably get sued <laughs> if I made things public. And so I was like, yeah, I named this character after this person, but, but none of the characters are based on real people. It's all based on fiction, my author imagination, but really it was this person. <laughs> and so they've loved it. They, they eat that sort of stuff up. Um, oh, another thing I did with this last one, just this idea is for, you know, listeners, if they want to implement, um, my husband and I decided when I got married, when we got married, that I wouldn't tell people my legal last name. My name is Andrea Pearson. That's my maiden name. I was already with a, con a publisher when I married him. So we decided to keep our last name um, private 
and we decided not to share pictures of him since he's an adult and he's out in the world. I share pictures of my kids because they're with me all the time. But my husband, I'm, I've had readers that have come to, to Utah looking for me. And so I'm like, and they've asked for my address, my dad's address, my parents' phone numbers and things like that. So we don't, I don't give my husband's picture, but I've put it with his permission in the most recent box set because, you know, I was like, hey, if you want to see what my husband looks like, that's the number one question I get when I share my kids' pictures is, what does your husband look like? I want to see how they compare. And so that was a good incentive for them to download. And so there's all sorts of things that you can do to make them more appealing and then to make it worth it. And like what Joe was saying, I, I'm very conscientious. I want to make sure that I'm not gouging. Is that the word? Yeah. Gouging my readers. I don't want to sell them something they've bought before. So I put a lot of work into these. My author notes end up being like 30,000 words, you know, total between all the books. And then I do offer exclusive stuff, you know, bought um, new stories and the illustrations, all of this stuff that they can't get anywhere else. And so far they've said it's very much worth it. I have had readers wait a year or two for that box set to come up. And so I'm making sure that I don't do that until the last book in that series, the one that will be in the box set has been published for at least a year and a half because I don't want to punish readers who download at full price or make them feel like they should wait until that box set is available. Since you're doing these on your site, do you charge more than nine ninety nine? Because we should we didn't mention that that's kind of the ceiling on Amazon if you want the seventy percent royalty, and it's why I've never done like an eight book complete series box set because those would be like that'd be like thirty dollars worth of stuff. Um, and I know you can on the other sites, but I was curious uh, what you're doing on your site there. Um, the first box set, the first Andrea Pearson works volume one books, volume one, whatever. I don't remember what they're called. Uh, that one's $9.99 and I get $9.40 off of that because PayPal has their little fee. Um, and then the second one is $15.99 because it's 10 novels. And But I actually, I have done those box sets and I've sold them for $25 and I've run promotions through Kobo and iTunes. Like they've featured those before because they're exclusive to them and they're not on Amazon because of Amazon's, you know, you drop you, drop you to 35% royalties after $9.99. And so um, those work well on other retailers, but yeah, it's really hard to work around Amazon. Do you have any thoughts on that, Joe, before we, we should mention too, that we're now in the part of our category where we're talking more about increasing earnings. Uh, you know, before we were kind of talking about selling stuff probably as a lost leader to uh, increase reach and exposure to other, other readers in your genre. Um, I haven't done anything uh, specifically like this, like sell it direct to readers, but I have done s things similar. Again, uh, because I work with, with Story Bundle a lot, frequently I, uh, I, I came up with ways to, well, let's put it this way. Uh, the Book of Deacon, the original Book of Deacon trilogy uh, was written early enough along in my career that I didn't know that it was typical to chapterize books because I had just read the Discworld series and, and Terry Pratchett doesn't break his books up into chapters in almost any of his books. So I was like, well, if, if he doesn't do it, I don't have to do it. And I got a lot of comments, not like so much people knocking off, you know, points on reviews, but lots of comments from people saying like, uh, it wasn't broken into chapters, which made it really hard to plan a night of reading because I didn't know where I should stop reading. So I have done things like special, the Book of Deacon special edition, where this is the one that's broken into chapters, you know, and stuff like that. And typically they would be limited edition types of things that were either delivered directly to fans who asked for them. I've had people email me and ask about them. I usually didn't sell it to them. I usually gave it to them for free. Just thanks for asking. Or when I was reaching out to new readers, because the books starting with four and moving onward, they do have chapters. So if I'm trying to get people into the modern series, giving them and you know giving them the same sort of uh, structure of book makes a lot more sense so i've done stuff like that or sort of limited edition uh, uh targeted special edition type stuff all right and for those of you uh, who have i guess andrea if you're selling something on your site how are you delivering it to readers are you using another service for that or do you just email them after you get the paypal <laughs> oh yeah i do it all by hand actually i do it through snail mail <laughs> Are they paperbacks? No. Just, oh, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I, I once did, early on, I did something where I just emailed people after they sent the PayPal. It was like a bonus thing that wasn't. Yeah, really that was book. pre book funnel days, and that's, yes, it was. That, and that was such a pain. <laughs> it was. I was at a tennis tournament watching, like on on my phone. I'm like, oh crap! I got to email them. I don't want them to wait too long to get their books. <laughs> yeah, I'm so. Uh, uh, Damon Courtney, if you're listening, you walk on water. <laughs> and so, 
Yeah, no, I do. Um, yeah, I use BookFunnel. So BookFunnel has a setup where you do like the web hooks. You know, if if they buy through PayPal, PayPal sends a little bit of data information to BookFunnel that says, "Hey, so and so bought your book. Go ahead and email them it." And so, so yeah, BookFunnel does it all, and it's wonderful. It's a little bit technical to set up at first, but once you do it, you can replicate. You know, just create and duplicate the previous button on PayPal, and then you just fill in all the blanks. And BookFunnel pretty much has everything there for you to do. They'll say copy and paste this into this spot on pay PayPal, then copy and paste this into from PayPal into this spot on BookFunnel, and and that's been really awesome. It's nice not having to worry about it. Uh, this last time I did have a couple of times where two, um, three people got charged twice for a a box set, and two of them asked for refunds, and then a third gifted it to her daughter, and so readers are super forgiving when it comes to things like that. And these are people you're targeting people who are already, they're currently your readers. I don't, I mean, I'll post it occasionally to like the, the wide interwebs, but I don't generally, I mean, I've actually never had somebody who wasn't already a reader download because I'm not gearing it to them. You know, I mean, it's not a huge price jump. I mean, uh, it's not a huge, uh, what's the word discount. So nine ninety nine, fifteen ninety nine. 15 99. These are real fans who actually buy them, you know, yeah, it's the, the same people that want the DVDs for the commentary to hear more about like the behind the scenes stuff, which I am sad that, that you can't get that with streaming stuff anymore. Yeah. Like I miss the heck out of DVD commentaries. Yeah. That's we, my husband and I, I mean, our podcast is based, is on, it's based on movies and like we share trivia from those. And so you do streaming, you don't get that, that fun commentary. You don't get like, you know, the, what are they called? The gag reels. You don't get deleted scenes. You know, I, that's, it's, I'm, yeah, I'm not 100% pro streaming. <laughs> it's convenient, but it's not as fun, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, one more way, one more thing I wanted to talk about that's working really well right now as we, we record this in September, 2019. Uh, like I mentioned before, you're seeing a lot of 99 cent full series bundles in Amazon that are exclusive and in Kindle Unlimited. And I did this myself with um, my five book Heritage of Power series this summer, which is fantasy. It's not something I was ever willing to do, put together a bundle of eight books because I knew like we were talking about, I don't want to sell it at nine 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 usually and across the board. Um, but I, I decided to try this because I'd seen other people doing it. So I made it 99 cents. And honestly, my first, you know, the whole idea being it's going to make money from KU. Obviously, 35 cents on a five book series is, is not great return but this was a series that had been uh, in KU for like a year and a half and complete so sales had dropped down quite a bit and I'm working on the sci-fi right now too so I'm not doing anything to really help the fantasy along so I put it out there um, I think it ended up being something like 2200 KE -E <laughs> whatever Kindle pages you know um, so and it ends up being over ten dollars if somebody reads it from start to finish and these are actually books that sold really well when they came out and I made however much on them individually. Um, but so I just thought, let's try this because I see other people doing it and uh, let's see how much it actually earns. And in the beginning, I was kind of down on it because it was mostly people just that had borrowed in, in KU were like, oh, I can now buy a copy for 99 cents. So I was like, oh man, everybody's just buying it for 99 cents. This is, you know, this isn't a great earner, but uh, it took probably three weeks or so for really the Kate, the page reads to start rolling along. And then by, I think I published it in early June and in July it sold about, it made $20,000 on about $3,000. I was spending about a hundred dollars a day on AMS ads, which is actually a lot for me, but I was kind of like, well, let me see how much it's earning overall. And yeah, this makes sense to go ahead and keep spending that much. That was a really bad ROI then. <laughs> yeah, only seventeen thousand in the bank for uh, <laughs> after you. I, I it was can't. actually a, it was a recycled cover. It was like I had wow. it. I had the art. I was like, hey guys, I think I paid two hundred for my cover. Not even that much. Maybe fifty dollars for them to throw the font stuff on there. So anyway, that ended up being obviously pretty lucrative. It stayed in the top five hundred there for quite a while, and it's it's I still it's not taking. I'm not able to spend as much on ads, and it's dropped to about seven hundred something in the store, but that's not bad still it's making really good money and like I said it's it makes me less feel less bad about writing these long novels in my sci-fi series where it's just that is the story that wants to be told it's not like you can sell them for twice as much as you can a 75,000 word novel so that's a strategy that's working right now and you can get credit for up to 3,000 KENPC 
there. I got it right. I was right actually going to ask you about that. Like, have you come up against their limit? I haven't with like this five book thing. And most of the people I see doing like eight, their books are shorter. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, they'll be like 150 page books. I think my books were like 300 pages or something or 400. I don't know if you make them paperbacks. Um, so, but you have to decide if it's worth it to you. There's certainly the argument that, oh, you know, I'm devaluing the work by putting five books out for 99 cents, but you're not if you're making $20,000 on a series that was making like $500 a month, you know. It's, it's about the off. art, Lindsay. It's not about the money. <laughs> well, I, I feel like I say this so often and people nod and then I hear them not agree <laughs> later. They're like, <laughs> it's not about the price on the book. It's about how much goes in your bank account at the those end are, of the month. Those are the people who are just jealous. They're like, oh my gosh, I, she's making that much. She doesn't value the art. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, whatever it is. And I understand too. I think when you're earlier in it and you haven't maybe seen that, oh, if I run a perma-free book one, it can sell a whole lot of other books in the series. And, and even with this box set, it's helped me keep sales up on my tie-in. This was a tie-in series to another series. So it's helped move copies too of those books. So I'm all for this right now. Uh, you know, in KU, they changed the rules because it, it didn't used to have a 3,000 page cap. There used to be no, so people were putting in like 20 books, you know, and getting $30 oh, for a borrow on a book that people only pay $10 to be in KU. So, uh, and I, 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 I keep expecting them to nerf it, to be honest, or to not allow the box sets in there but you know we'll see right now this is a fully my thing it's not a multi-author thing it's just one of my series um have you guys played with that at all or thought about doing it um i've done it but i was releasing so rarely back then that it didn't make a huge dent in my um in my royalties so like I, you know, I would take a series out of KU once I was not getting any pages read on it anymore. And then um, as a last ditch effort, you know, put up the box set and then, but honestly, I didn't give it a, a honest enough try. I mean, I didn't put any ads to it. I didn't even tell my readers because I was like, oh, they've already read it. So why would I, you know? So once I start releasing to Kindle Limited again, this series is a wide release, but the next series I'm planning on doing Kindle Limited. Um, I'm going to try that, see how it goes. I think that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I've, the, the series I'm releasing now, which is only three books deep so far, uh, is the first thing I've had that was in KU. So the first opportunity I have for that sort of thing. So I haven't been able to try that. If I ever do say, pull the book of Deacon out of wide, which it doesn't look like I'm going to do because it still does pretty well wide. Uh, I would absolutely do this because I have uh, just a colossal amount of words. Uh, and if I was to bundle like the whole, se the whole extended series, including the, the sort of spin-offs books, I could probably get right up against that, uh, that, that maximum page count. And uh, th these are books that have been out for so long. I really don't feel like I'm, I'm hurting anybody's feelings if, uh, if I put them in, in a bundle like this. So I would try it with that if I stopped earning wide. And I'll probably try it with this, this uh, urban fantasy if it gets long enough. Right. And we'll just emphasize this is a KU strategy. It's like, I wouldn't, I mean, I probably will put it out on the other sites for 99 cents when I go wide, just to be fair and let the readers on the other sites get it for that and then raise it up to 99 across the board, 999 across the board. All right. Just a couple more things we wanted to talk about. Um, Joe, did you want to talk about, or who put this in here? <laughs> that was me. When to release a bundle in a uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're right at the hour, so we'll try to move through it quickly, but, but uh, I've sort of, I've released bundles in two different, with two different timings, and I haven't really paid attention to how they compared, so I was just curious how you feel about them. Basically, uh, if you're going to release a, a bundle of the first three books, do you release it as soon as you release book three, or do you release, uh, release it sometime after, say, when you have a gap in your release schedule? Uh, for, for the Book of Deacon, I did it literally years later. And for my uh, free wrench series, the steampunk, I released book three within months. Uh, I had the, uh, the 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 books one through three bundle out. So, how do you? What are your thoughts on that? Um, for me, I um, a box set is technically a price promotion. You know, it's a drop in price because it's a buck to two dollars off. And I've got readers who are willing to buy at full price. And so, my philosophy, my the way I run my business is six months to a year and no sooner than six months because I don't want to punish people who buy that last book at full price. And so I'm like books one through three have to have been published everywhere that I'm going to publish it for at least six months to a year, just so that people who buy at full price don't 
I don't want to, I don't want to lose them. You know, I don't want to make offend them and have them not buy for me anymore. So that's basically the rule I follow. I think also my ideal would be to wait until the series is complete and I've moved on to something else. And like I said before, um, maybe I've already done some promos on book one. So it's good to have another starting book that I can promo. I have in the past done it early. Uh, my Dragon Blood series, I was think I was working on something else at the same time. I wasn't releasing those very quickly. So I had three books and then I had the fourth one. Um, I think I was publishing the fourth one in the series. And I said, well, let's try bundling the first three. This was back in, I think, 2014 or so before, maybe right before Kindle Unlimited started uh, or had really got underway. And so I did that three book set and I'm like, oh, let's try to get a book bub ad. Got a book bub ad, dropped it to 99 cents. And this is probably the only thing I've ever had just kind of stick in the Amazon store. It stuck in like the top 200 for of the whole store for months and so I left it at 99 cents I was like heck yeah I'll leave that there and keep them selling and so I think actually that book four is one of my highest earning books of all time if not the highest earning book of all time just because I've now run that uh promo on that bundle many times and because it's stuck in the top there for like five or six months um dragons you know who doesn't love dragons that was my first experience of something doing that you know of course it was a 99 cent box set so it was a great deal for people but even so i've had i've done other 99 cent box sets that don't stick like that one did so i regretted it that i mean i was happy to have that success but then i regretted that i only had one more book at full price for people to go on and buy at that time i, I think i hurried up and worked on book five as a, <laughs> as that was happening all right and then we kind of talked about doing a second bundle and maybe a third bundle. Like if you have nine books, that would be good. I, I never end up with nine books. So I end up with like eight, which doesn't really lend itself to a good second bundle. But I, Andrea, did you say that you actually make a series of your bundle, like a series page on Amazon for your bundles? Cause that seemed like a good idea. Cause I never know what to do with the one through three bundle. Cause they won't just put it on your regular series page unless you make it zero or something confusing. Yeah, I do that. And I do that on all the other retailers too. Like Smashwords has its series pages now. So, so the 10 book series I've got, um, one of those books is actually three, no, um, three novellas. And so box set one is books one through four, which is includes those novellas. And then box set two is books four through six, if I can remember math. <laughs> and then the last one is whatever it was, eight through 10. The last one was eight through 10. So five through seven, eight through 10. Anyway, so the first one, what I did is I went onto Amazon and I called that first box set book one in the Mosaic Chronicles box set series. And then the next box set is book two and the next box set is book three. And that really, really has helped. I mean, that has helped hugely with, with um, uh, read through because Amazon will tell them at the end of the box set, hey, here's the next book in the series, you know, because it's linked as a series. And that really helps, especially with the book club promotions, you know, when you get a whole bunch of downloads that you get a lot more read through. And yeah, my read through rate's gone up quite significantly since I started doing that. And like I said, Smashwords does the same thing. They allow you to have series pages. And so I've got those box sets up on Smashwords as a series as well. Very good idea. If I ever managed to write nine books in a series, because <laughs> eight just does not let, eight you can do four and four, but then you could do two four. in a box set. Maybe the last two books since they are going to be longer, right? Right, since mine are. always are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, something yeah. to think about. I always have all these things I want to do if I'm actually get burned out on the writing side. And I'm like, well, I could just, you know, do all these catch up things and do more promotions and marketing. But it always ends up being like the writing is the most fun thing for me. <laughs> the other stuff is on the to do list. So maybe someday. <laughs> Did you guys want to talk about anything more on this or should we just wrap it up? I think we could wrap it up. All right. Well, hopefully some of our rambling about box sets has been helpful to you guys. And thank you very much for listening. Please visit sixfigureauthors.com with the number six for the episode notes to leave a comment or to ask a question for a future show. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.